Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Mayuko and welcome back to my channel. So, a lot of y'all noticed in my recent videos that I got a new keyboard. And you're like, Mayuko, why haven't you talked about it yet? Do you like it? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? So, today, we're gonna talk about it. I've made like a few other keyboard videos before, like best keyboard for programmers, all of my desk setup videos where I talk about keyboards. So if you're new here because you're also part of the keyboard community, hello, welcome, my name's Miyuko. If you like this video uh, at the end, please consider subscribing. Okay, so let's talk about it. This is the HHKB, the Happy Hacking Keyboard. I have the Professional Hybrid Type S. So before we dive into like the specs or like the review part of the video, I wanna talk about what's important to me in a keyboard and also why I chose to try out this one. As far as keyboards go for me, I'm like pretty pragmatic. I need something that like works well, is super duper reliable, and it's just kind of like fun to type on. So there's really like three main like things that I'm looking for in a keyboard, comfort, usability, and delight which that's very similar to like how I view any product out in the world, whether it's like an iOS app or a keyboard or like, I don't know, a new wooden spoon or something like that. And I was in the market for a new keyboard because I wanted to try a new one and I have been recommended the HHKB by many friends, but it wasn't until I saw a video by a Japanese YouTube channel called Tobarobu that I kind of just went for it. In the video, he reviews his HHKB and he talks so passionately about it that I was like, okay, I gotta try this one. And specifically, I really wanted a mechanical Bluetooth keyboard that was kind of like white-ish and had decent build quality. And surprisingly, when you look for those specific requirements, it's actually kind of hard to find like a really good keyboard. And anywhere I looked when I searched those terms, they were like, dude, just get an HHKB. So yes, I went for it, I bought this keyboard, I bought it in May, it's July now, so I've been testing it for about two months, and I feel like I can finally like give it a proper review. So let's talk about the specs of this thing. So the HHKB comes in three types, the Pro Hybrid Type S, the Pro Hybrid, and the Pro Classic. I bought the top of the line professional hybrid type S version because I wanted to try out like the best of this version of it. I bought it with my own money. I wasn't sent this or anything like that. Fujitsu is the company that makes this and it's made in Japan. The switches are Topra electrostatic capacitive silent key switches. They're pretty squishy and it comes in four colorways. You can get it either in white or black and then you can also get the blank keycaps or the printed ones. As you can see in mine, I got the white blank keycaps, which we'll talk about whether that was a good idea in a little bit. You can pair up to four different Bluetooth devices and you can also plug in using a USB-C cord right here. It runs on two AA batteries and it boasts three months of battery life. And so this model itself, when I bought it, it was 337 US dollars. Okay, so now that that's done, the specs are done, the objectivity is out the window. Now let's bring in the subjectivity and my opinions about this thing. I remember there's three different buckets, comfort, usability, and delight. So I'm gonna talk about this keyboard in those three different ways. So the first is comfort. I spend hours and hours and hours on this thing every single day. And so it's really important to me to have a very comfortable keyboard. And when it comes to comfort, I think the Topper switches actually are very, very comfortable to type on. Prior to this, I was using the Keychron K2 and that uses Cherry MX Browns. And I've also typed on Cherry MX Blues. I also have used like the Logitech MX keys that are more of the chiclet keys and all mechanical. Out of all of those, I think the Topper switches are definitely the most comfortable. Like I don't have to slam the keys or anything at all. And it's just very, just like seamless. The best way that I can describe them is that they're just like very squishy. So it feels like it like pads my fingers a little bit when I type. Not that it makes like a huge difference. Like I don't necessarily see like a difference in my finger fatigue at the end of the day or anything like that. But it is just like more comfortable to type on. I will include a sound test at the end when we're going over the delight section because then I think you'll get a sense of like how squishy it actually is. So HHKB does make a wrist rest, but I didn't love the look of them, so I didn't buy them. So I've been using this without a wrist rest. And I gotta say, it's pretty tall as a keyboard, and so I kind of wish I had a wrist rest, so I probably will be getting one. But all in all, that hasn't really caused like any problems, I would say. Like my wrist doesn't hurt any more because of this one. You can also tilt the keyboard up more with the little things on the back but I just don't see a need for that, so they're always closed for me. All in all, I think it's a very comfortable keyboard. It's a nice sized one for my hands too, especially because my hands are 
pretty small. And so I can reach all of the keys using my two hands, which is really nice. So I don't have to travel very far to get to what I need. So that's comfort. I would say it's like, nine out of 10, eight out of 10 on comfort, like pretty dang comfortable. I don't know what a 10 out of 10 comfort keyboard would look like. And I feel like you can always strive for more. So I'm gonna land it in kind of like, it's an A in comfort. The next is usability. And I have a lot to say about the usability of this keyboard. <laughs> First of which, which is like the most talked about part about the HHKB is the layout. So the layout on this keyboard is a little abnormal compared to like your standard keyboard, mostly in that it doesn't have as many keys on the bottom row right here. And so because there isn't like a control button, the original like standard mapping of this keyboard looks like this. So you'll see that the control takes place of the caps lock and you actually use the function key for a lot of things which is on the far right. I personally couldn't get used to it uh, because I need my control lock button mostly to change input from Japanese to English because that's how I have it set up on my Mac. And I don't really like switching my layout too much from one keyboard to another because I like the consistency. And so I actually remapped everything to something that I'm comfortable with. Because yes, luckily you can remap all the keys on this keyboard, which is what I would expect from a $300 keyboard. So this is what I changed my layout back to. It's very similar or it's as similar as it can be to the Mac layout. Given that I don't use a control key very much, uh, I just kind of got rid of it and I haven't had any problems with it really. Oh, on the note of customization, in addition to being able to change the key maps for all these keys, there's also a dip switch in the back right here. There you go. And it shows you the mappings and all the settings that you can change easily through these little switches. The other thing about the layout that's different is that the backspace is one row lower than usual. A lot of people like this because especially like when you're coding or something, you tend to use the backspace a lot and so you don't have to reach as far for the backspace. Typically on a keyboard, this is where you find like the backslash or like the straight line key and stuff, which in reality, you don't use that often. Uh, and so I found that it's pretty nice. Like it's nice that the backspace is so easy to get to. Granted, now I don't know where my backslash will go, but I don't use it that often. So it's not that big of a problem. I will say though, with the backspace being here instead of here, it, it's a little awkward to go back to like a standard keyboard layout. Like when I'm typing on my Mac keyboard, I'm like, oh, oh, that's a lot further than usual. So it does take a bit of like this context switching, but I think this is fine. It, that's not like that big of a deal. And the last bit on layout in relation to usability that I wanted to talk about is like the unlabeled keys. So I got the unlabeled unprinted keys because I was like, it looks so clean and so nice and it's beautiful, but it was a mistake, honestly. Uh, I, I wish I had gotten the printed keys. So I do touch type and I can type most of the things, but really where it makes a difference, I feel like where it, I struggle now is when it comes to numbers and symbols. And if I'm typing something quickly that I know, then like it's not that big of an issue because I'll remember where things are. But if I'm typing like complex passwords into something, or if I'm just typing like something sort of not like usual, like something that I don't usually type, then it actually like, I'm honestly trial and erroring, like, okay, which I think the dollar sign and pound sign is around here, but I have to kind of search for it. So I actually ordered some printed keycaps uh, to put on this because it's a little painful, but that's totally my mistake. They have a printed version of the keycaps that they sell for HHKB. So that was just my poor judgment. The next thing I wanna evaluate this thing for usability is the battery life. So on the website, it boasts like three month battery life if you use the AA batteries. In my experience, it hasn't been that way, but all of my other friends who I talk to who have the HHKB have like a one to two month battery life. So I think it's just me. I think maybe I'm just using like old batteries or something. So I'm still playing around with it, um, but it is good enough where I don't have to like switch it out every day or anything like that. I think right now I'm switching it out every like three weeks, but I'm pretty sure the batteries that I have are quite old, so that's on me. The one thing I will say though, is that I wish this thing had rechargeable batteries instead of needing to add AA batteries all the time. Like if I could just plug in a USB-C overnight once in a while, and then this thing is juiced, that would be great. It just feels very wasteful to keep going through AA batteries. Like I have a stash of AA batteries that this thing is using as well as my other gadgets that use batteries. Technically, 
I could solve it by using and buying rechargeable batteries, but it would just be easier if it had an onboard battery itself that I can charge. So in that sense, I think it loses to something like the Logitech MX keys where you can charge the keyboard itself. Also, the way that it tells you that it's low battery is a little like, not the most intuitive, like an orange dot appears where the light indicator is. And if it's like one appears every 30 seconds and the battery is low, but I'm not gonna sit there for 30 seconds watching this light. So I wish it did have a clearer battery indicator, but maybe that compromises on the simple design. And the last thing in terms of usability that I wanna talk about is the multi-device capability. So in other videos that I've talked about for keyboards, I've talked about how important it is for me to be able to pair one keyboard to many devices because at the time I was using multiple computers and I didn't wanna have a set of keyboard and mouse for each thing. But lifestyle change, I don't really use any other computers other than my MacBook Pro these days, so I haven't had to use it. But according to my friends, it's very easy to pair and switch from one input to another. I just haven't used it. So usability wise, I'll give it like six or seven out of 10, partly because of my own user error, but also I think there are certain things that could be done to this keyboard to make it even easier to use. All in all, this keyboard doesn't like prevent me from doing work or something, cause there are keyboards out there that literally like prevent me from being able to do work on my computer. And so, yeah, I would say this is a very like well designed, like usable keyboard. And the last thing that I wanna talk about for what's important to me in a keyboard is the delight of using one. Maybe I'm turning into a bit of like a keyboard enthusiast, but I think like being delighted by your keyboard is kind of a nice thing. Like you're gonna use it a lot. And I just like using tools, whether that be my keyboard or my mouse or my desk or like pens or paper or whatever that I like using, that I enjoy using, that make work and personal life more fun. So that's another important like requirement for me in a keyboard. And as far as the delight goes, I gotta say, this keyboard's nice. I mean, granted, it's like a $300 keyboard, which is, you know, one of the more expensive ones out there, but I feel like I've never used a keyboard like this before. Although I will say it does remind me of like kind of retro Mac keyboard vibes, probably mostly because of the color and the shape of the keys. But I think just like the Topper switches, like how simple and light and easy it is, like the color and the look and feel of it and stuff, you're not gonna find anything like this out there, I think. One of the things that a lot of people like about the HHKB is the sound of the Topper switches, and I also like it too. I mean, granted, I like the sound of most mechanical keyboards so long as it's not too clicky or too loud. So here's a little sound test for you for your ears for how they sound. So in addition to sounding really good, I think it's just a very visually pleasing keyboard. It looks good on my desk on top of my Grove made mat. It matches with my Logitech mouse as well as like my macbook and my grove main stand like it just fits really well into like the ecosystem of my desk because you all know i don't like rgb stuff i like light colored things and when you rule out like black colored and rgb colored things like that's that doesn't leave you with very many choices when it comes to keyboards and other things also for your desk so i'm just happy that i found this one so as far as delight goes nine out of ten because the nine is, again, user error, and I don't really know what a 10 out of 10 looks like. Like, 10 out of 10 keyboard that's delightful, like maybe it gives you snacks in the middle of the day or something like that, like that'd be pretty cool. But you know, it's a keyboard and it's very delightful. So here are the final scores of how I view the HHKB in terms of comfort, usability, and design. I gotta say, it's a good keyboard. It's an expensive keyboard, but I do think that like, for this price, it's reasonable, but also I don't think it's like a necessity by any means. So if you have like a $300-ish budget to spurge on something to improve your desk setup and you're interested in using this, then I say why not? I'm not sure if it's like the best keyboard out there because best is highly subjective and I feel like each keyboard is good for something different. Um, but I do think this is like a long haul keyboard. Like I'm gonna use this for many, many, many years. And that's how I kind of justified the price. I'm like, I'm gonna use this for hours and hours every day for many, many, many years. I'm gonna take good care of it and like really enjoy using it. And so it was worth it. 
So that's my review on the Happy Hacking Keyboard. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. If you have an HHKB, tell me what you like and don't like about it. If you like this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I have other like tool review videos and stuff and I like making them. So if there's anything that you'd like me to review, then let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so that you get notifications for these videos when they come out. There will also be a little bit of bonus content for my YouTube members. And so that'll be in the link in the description box down below where I further talk about my HHKB and just life stuff. And we just talk and chill and stuff. All right, everybody, my HHKB and I, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.